Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Brazilian Prison Town The Brazilian village of Dois Rios is home to about 90 residents. The village has no grocery store, not a single church, and is in the midst of being swallowed by the jungle. It's over 100 miles from Rio de Janeiro, positioned on a mostly virgin island known as Ilha Grande. But while this place may look like a jungle paradise, in truth it has a dark and haunting past. Many of the buildings are abandoned and filled with tropical vegetation. The old soccer pitch has turned into a grove of trees, and the main square of the city is gradually becoming a meadow. Prior to 1884, the village was home to an estimated 5,000 enslaved people brought to Brazil from Africa. These people worked the sugarcane fields and coffee plantations. In 1888, slavery was abolished in Brazil. Local authorities purchased the island and turned it into a prison. According to Associate Professor Gelsom Rosentino with Rio de Janeiro State University, prison islands were all the rage at that time. In the second half of the 19th century, all the best prisons were on islands, from Alcatraz to Pianosa. The tropical island remained a prison until deterioration and prisoners' rights organizations caused it to be gradually abandoned. By 1994, most of the prison complex was destroyed. Because the community on the island had relied on the labor of the prisoners to live, conditions quickly grew dire. Food supplies dwindled, the school shut down, and the houses fell into disrepair. There are still a few people on the island now, but the town is slowly fading away. Number 9. Tomb of the Deposed Emperor Liu He was one of the worst emperors in Chinese history. He ruled during the Han Dynasty, installed as the emperor in 74 BC. But just 27 days after he was made emperor, he was deposed and scratched off the list of official emperors. There were supposedly 1,127 examples of misconduct placed against him, and he was banished. Emperor Liu He was such a disgrace that he was exiled to live life as a commoner. He died about 20 years later, though his bloodline lived on through his 22 children. Even though he was banished, he still had 16 wives. We don't know what happened that made the emperor shamed so publicly. Many of the records surrounding his life were intentionally destroyed to erase him from the history books. But here's where the mystery thickens. The deposed emperor's tomb was discovered in the northern part of Xinjiang in 2011. Archaeologists entered his tomb and discovered over 20,000 artifacts. Even though he was supposedly banished to life as a peasant, he was buried in a massive grave filled with jade artifacts, gold and bronze, and 5,000 pieces of bamboo slips written with the wisdom of Confucius. Clearly, the emperor was still important enough to be buried with an insane amount of riches. What he did to be banished, why he was still important upon his death, and why his name was nearly scrubbed from history is unknown. Number 8. Garden of the Hesperides Lyxus was once a major Phoenician city alongside the river Lucos, right at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. The mysterious city in modern Morocco was supposedly the site of a mythical garden from which golden apples grew in abundance. This was the mythical place out of antiquity called the Garden of the Hesperides. Legends say the garden was tended by magical nymphs. It was also the place in Greek mythology where Hercules had to travel to kill the Ladon dragon which protected the garden from trespassers. Today, the city of Lyxus is little more than a ruin. Its streets have turned to dust. The Temple of Hercules is a crumbling mess of stone, and the Roman theater has been abandoned for centuries. The old channels that once brought running water to the inhabitants are dry, and there is no sign of the mythical garden said to have gifted the residents with delicious golden apples. Number 7. Great Zimbabwe The ancient city of Great Zimbabwe was supposedly one of the most impressive metropolises on the planet. Modern archaeologists agree it was an engineering wonder of the ancient world. However, the archaeologists of the past credited the African city to the Phoenicians or Babylonians. No one could believe such a grand place was built by Africans. This was a major issue with archaeology prior to these most recent decades. People who were supposed to be brilliant scientists were ignorant to the history of Africa and racist. 
believing any great ruins found on the continent were built by the Arabians, or wandering tribes of Mesopotamians. We now know that was very wrong. There is no better example of how wrong the old explorers were than Great Zimbabwe. It was a megalithic city built of stone between roughly 1100 and 1450 AD in Zimbabwe. It was likely the work of the Shona culture, whose descendants make up much of the local population to this day. But it may have also been built by other neighboring societies who migrated to the city looking for a better life. 600 years ago, Great Zimbabwe had roughly the same number of people living in it as London, England. The city grew wealthy through trade, and they were positioned to receive caravans from Arabia, India, and China. Unfortunately, we don't know what happened here in the end. After 350 years of unparalleled prosperity, this city was abruptly abandoned. It's now nothing but a ruin, with the busted fragments of the old royal city, mud brick houses, large walls, and conical towers littering the site. There are also the ruins of over 200 smaller settlements and trading posts in the surrounding area. Number 6. China's Secret Pyramid China supposedly has a gigantic pyramid that dates back 8,000 years. This mysterious pyramid is top secret and rumored to be guarded by the military. Whispers of the structure go back to at least 1912. That was when Fred Meyer Schroeder, an American trader, was traveling through the Shanxi province. He wrote in his diary that he witnessed a pyramid standing roughly 1,000 feet tall and twice as wide. He also claimed it was surrounded by a group of smaller pyramids. Three decades later, U.S. Air Force pilot James Gossman witnessed a pure white pyramid while flying over China that he claimed was twice the size of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. When the German investigator Hartwig Hausdorff traveled to China in the 1990s, he couldn't find it. Instead, he encountered the Chinese military patrolling the area. No one has ever been able to take a clear picture of this pyramid, and no mainstream archaeologists have been invited to investigate. The pyramid is supposedly kept a major secret by China, but nobody understands why. Maybe it's a royalty thing with China not wanting to disrupt the graves of buried rulers from centuries past. Or maybe it's something even weirder. Do you think China is hiding a pyramid? Let me know in the comments below! Number 5. Dragon's Triangle The mysterious Dragon's Triangle is the Japanese version of the Bermuda Triangle. In Japanese folklore, the triangle has been considered a dangerous and unpredictable zone for at least 1,000 years. Locals call it Mano Umi, which translates roughly to the Devil's Sea. The mystery is that things here seem to disappear. Sailors have reported fishing boats vanishing without a trace. Some have supposedly witnessed a dragon rise to the surface of the water, and others have seen entire crews be pulled from their boat down to the watery seabed. Between 1952 and 1954, Five Japanese military vessels and 700 crew members allegedly disappeared within the Dragon's Triangle. The triangle itself begins in Tokyo, moves southeast to Guam, then northwest to the southern tip of Taiwan, and north again to Japan. Technically, the whole area is part of the Philippine Sea. It is a volatile and highly volcanic region known for its seismic activity. In Japanese legend, it was the Dragon's Triangle that wiped out the fleet of the Mongol ruler Kublai Khan when he tried to invade Japan in 1281. Japan was on the brink of being conquered by the Mongolians when their ships were decimated by two mysterious storms that rose without warning. Since then, the Japanese have attributed their safety to the wrath of the Dragon's Triangle, which sank 900 Mongol ships and killed 40,000 soldiers. Number 4. Caves of Mystery Outside the city of Bhubaneswar in India, there is a mysterious archaeological site called the Udayagiri Caves. The caves here are partly natural and partly human-made. They serve as temples and have been around since at least the 1st century BC. There are a total of 32 caves that began as natural caverns and were transformed by human hands into marvelous temples. All the temples except one were dedicated to the Jainism religion. Jainism is one of the oldest religions on the planet, dating back 500 years before Christianity. It is still widely practiced in India with an estimated 5 million followers. 
Much like Buddhism and Hinduism, Jainism promotes enlightenment and encourages people to be non-violent and respect plants and animals and speak the truth. Followers of Jainism are not allowed to steal. They cannot become attached to worldly possessions, and ideally, they are celibate. Just like how Buddhism worships the great Buddha, Jainism has its own spiritual leaders as well. There are 24 jinas who supposedly reached spiritual enlightenment and thus escaped the vicious cycle of physical rebirth. The Udayagiri caves were made by worshippers of this religion. One of the caves may have even been occupied by the legendary Queen of Lala Tendu Kesari. Historians believe she may have lived in the double-storied cave with 32 cells, each one decorated with well-preserved sculptures and reliefs. Number 3. Citadel La Ferriere Citadel La Ferriere is one of the most spectacular archaeological sites in Haiti. It is an iconic and massive stone fortress located on top of a jungle mountain, utterly abandoned and totally creepy. It was built purely for defense. The issue with a small island like Haiti is that building traditional coastal fortifications was not ideal. Fortresses like that would be vulnerable to any attack by sea. By building a citadel at the top of a mountain, the Haitians had a much better chance of defense. They could attack invaders trying to breach the island and had a major defensive position that would be nearly impossible to beat. But why was the citadel built at all? Construction was complete in 1820, with the whole point to protect the recently freed Haitian people. There was a real concern that the French army would come back and enslave them a second time. To prevent that from happening, they built a monumental fort to defend themselves, but the French never came back, and so its 365 cannons never got used. Number 2. Temple of Seti I One of the greatest and most mysterious temples in all of Egypt can be found in the ancient city of Abydos. It's the famous Temple of Seti I, carved out of stone 3,000 years ago. The temple originated as a necropolis for Egyptian royalty throughout the 1st and 2nd dynasties. Then it transitioned into a place of worship. It quickly became one of the top pilgrimage destinations in Egypt for the cult worship of Osiris. As the worship of Osiris became more and more popular, pharaohs continued to build more monumental structures in Abydos. The temple grew positively massive as each Egyptian king made it better and better to show their dedication. Then, under the rule of Ramses I in the 19th dynasty, between 1290 and 1279 BC, the Temple of Seti I reached its peak. It was even home to the Abydos King List, a long gallery with the cartouches of the previous 76 ruling pharaohs. It's behind the temple that we find one of its most intriguing features. There is a large structure called the Osirion. The mystery is that no one knows what it is. The structure is behind the main temple but doesn't seem to hold any purpose. Some have suggested it was designed as a copy of a tomb from the Valley of the Kings. Archaeologists say that nowhere else in Egypt is any similar architecture found, giving them very little to compare it to. We don't know who built it, what it was for, or why its foundations are even lower than the temple in front of it. Number 1. Hisham's Palace Hisham's Palace was built around the year 734 AD in the Jordan Valley during the rule of Caliph Hisham ibn Abdel Malik. It's an important historical place because it was one of the very last desert palaces built in Jordan. In other words, it was one of the final pieces of ancient architecture constructed during the reign of the Second Islamic Caliphate. It's famous today for its simplistic style its construction of sandstone and baked brick, and its classical Islamic illustrations. The mysterious ruins consist of three main parts. There is the bath complex, the agricultural estate, and the palace itself. But you might be wondering what's so mysterious about the palace. The thing that really bothers archaeologists is that they don't know who lived in Hisham's palace. There are no textual sources that reference it. We know it was a product of the Umayyad dynasty, the second caliphate to rule after the death of the Prophet Muhammad. This was a time when desert fortifications, palaces, and castles were built throughout the Jordan Desert. Each construction was usually funded by a figure within the Umayyad ruling family. But the patron of Hisham's palace is an enigma. 
The second mystery is that we don't know what happened to this place. It was destroyed around 749 AD, shortly after it was built. Some suggest it was an earthquake, but that's never been proven. The whole place was abandoned shortly after and then lost to the desert sands. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these, and I'll see you next time. Bye!